Great, welcome back to this tutorial series on migrating from MQL4 to MQL5, serving as guidance for algorithmic traders. And so far in these tutorials, we've covered how to access symbol information, how to access historical OHLCV data, as well as bid and ask prices, and highlighting the key differences between MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5, and how to go about programmatically accessing those in MQL4 versus MQL5. This naturally leads us into order management and in this tutorial we're going to cover some of the conceptual differences between MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5 as regards order management, trades, positions, etc. and the differences programmatically that algorithmic traders will face when considering MQL5 order management. It's important here to draw some parallels between MT4 and MT5 and how they affect us programmatically and those are to do with orders firstly. So orders in essence function exactly the same in MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5. You'd like to execute for example in order to buy 0.01 lots of the euro dollar for example let's go over to mt4 and buy 0.01 lots of the euro dollar what we've just done is transact 0.01 lots on the euro dollar at the market price of 1.09315 that was available to us and this order has gone in and taken us into the market Similarly, in MT5, the same functionality exists in terms of order placement. So there's nothing different conceptually as regards orders themselves. The programmatic differences, however, between order management in MT4 versus MT5 come into play with the introduction of one additional concept in MQL5 and MetaTrader 5 in general, of course, and that is the concept of deals. And if you've come across these terms before and not understood their functional use in terms of programming trading, Trading strategies, then the one thing you need to know about deals is that they are the results of an order execution. So in MQL5 versus MQL4, the key difference programmatically is that while in MT4 we would send the same order instruction with one single call to order sent, where we specified the symbol name the price at which we wanted to execute the order in the case of pending orders such as buy limit buy stop sell limit sell stop and no price specification in, in cases of uh, market orders which we specify with order types op buy op sell in the case of longer short orders the difference to mt5 is that when executing an order of this nature in mt5 we have to specify certain additional parameters and hence in MT5, the MQL trade request structure came into play whereby we could specify additional parameters that allow us to distinguish between the type of execution and hence the type of generated deals that would come about as a result of our choices. So in terms of orders, the MQL trade request structure allows us to specify types of orders either for immediate execution or pending, and these are set using an action parameter. The three action parameters that are relevant to immediate execution or orders that are already in execution are trade action deal, trade action SLTP, and trade action close by if you'd like to close an existing position with another position. For pending orders, those same trade actions are trade action pending, trade action modify, an existing pending order, or trade action remove, which deletes a pending order, similar to what we would do in MetaTrader 4, whereby executing a call to order delete would get rid of an already pending order that hasn't yet been executed, or modify in order modify calls to an existing open order that would allow you to modify the SL and TP of your position. In MT5, when a deal is generated in response to your order, it will surface in the history tab of MetaTrader 5. So the best way for us to demonstrate how orders and deals interact and how these are placed in the platform and for what reasons and how you would go about accessing deals in MetaTrader 5, let's go over to MetaTrader 5 now and go over to history. Before we do that, let's take a look at the ticket number which is 20016 ending in 8730. This is the order we sent to buy 0 0.01 lots of euro dollar at price 1.09313. That was the available price to us at that point in time. Let's now go into our history tab and locate that order ending 8730. Before I do that, I'm going to set everything to positions. So it looks very similar to what we are used to with MetaTrader 4. However, with the order being in execution, in positions mode, we can't see the deal that was executed for our order that is currently in execution. To enable that, we need to right click inside our history tab and click on orders and deals. And here we're going to locate the order that we sent, ticket ID 8730 being the end of that ticket. 
and that was in order to buy the euro dollar at 0.01 lots at market. The deal that was generated in response to our order request had a different ticket ID. This is another concept to understand that each deal generated in response to an order request will have its own unique deal ID. So in this case, we have a ticket ID for our deal, and that is an in going at 0.01 lots, and it contains the price that we were served uh, for that market order's execution. So this is essentially the main relationship between uh, an order that you execute and the, a deal that is generated in response to your execution. Similarly, once we'd like to close this position, let's say using the X button here to close that position off, we've now sold our euro dollar 0 0.01 lot and that will be recorded as an order on its own. So here we now have an order to sell the euro dollar 0 0.01 lots of it at market and a deal is hence generated with its own unique ticket ID that says okay we're going out of this position at 0 0.01 lots and the price at which we're going out is 1.09294. This is the key difference between MQL4 and MQL5, both programmatically as well as in terms of usage on the platform. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.